Isn't that grand? Look who's here in the studio. Just when I was feeling sick, Doc. I mean, but these... <laughs> this is Dr. Kevin Schmidt. He's the head Hi, of Kevin, the... Nice to meet you. Hey, ER, ER doctor. He's head of the disaster preparedness uh, over at San Joaquin. San Joaquin. And what, we awesome. wanted, uh, what I wanted to do to, uh, for the first 10 minutes, then we're going to talk about women's hormones, by the way, after the rest of oh, uh, well, and testosterone for women, which would be interesting. Okay. But the first segment, I want, I want to talk about the flu because... We, uh, I want to tell you a story, what happened to this morning, all right? But I had a guy come in this morning, and he epitomizes what 99.9% of the people out there uh, asked him, do you want a flu shot? And he said, no, I never get the flu, blah, 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 you know, forget about me. And I uh, explained to him, Holder, you're making a mistake, because most people uh, don't realize. You see, last year, 36,000 people died of the flu. In mm. fact, I had one of my own patients who had lung disease who got the flu, didn't get immunized, got the flu, and bottom line, she died. Wow. 36, all right? Jeez. Now, she had terrible immune system issues and all that kind of stuff, and, and th- we understand that. She's one of those 36,000. But here's what people don't understand. You see, when you tell me you won't get the flu, I don't get the flu, that's really a lie. You will get, everybody will, who's exposed, will, if it has no immunization for it, you will get the flu. Now, you will probably get an attenuated version. You may not even notice you got the flu. A little few aches and you have a little runny nose, and who cares? And you run, fluff it off, and it doesn't bother you. But here's where we're making a problem with society, Jazz. <clears throat> Let's say that you are that person. You've got the, vi- the flu, but you don't know it. You're, wa- you're going to walk around for three weeks shedding virus, mm. all right? Every time you cough, you're blowing it all you over. You did say shedding. Shedding. Okay. Like, right. it's essentially I'm you said something else. But, like. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, bottom line, all you have to do is walk by some other person who is you know elderly, or is a diabetic, uh, or has some other immune system immune issue, problem, sure, and you yeah, cough and you. they get that virus, you just sentence them to death. We are looking at the flu shot as sort of preventing me from getting the flu, and it's really we're trying to prevent the flu from affecting sure. all these people and killing these all now these that's people. that's a great point. And I this is, admit, it's a, a social point. responsibility to do this. It's not my job. To, I'm not going to get it. You know, screw the other guy. And this is what people don't understand, Jazz. The, if we take it, look, the flu shot is safe. It no longer has mercury, thymosol, all this kind of stuff. Uh, there's very few people. In fact, we have flu shot now that doesn't even have eggs, and if you have egg allergy, it. Uh, so all this idea about the flu causing, uh, you know, all, a lot of illness is not really up to date. But the flu, if I take, don't take it, and I don't get the flu, but I get this attenuated version, I'm coughing. Do you want to be end, end up responsible? For coughing in some old granny's, you know, that's going to die because mm, of it. Mm. See, that's where we're missing a society. There's a public responsibility. I, I want to ask you this: If you had polio, all right, uh, or let's say whooping cough, let's say you got whooping cough, would you attenuate version? Would you be walking out there giving it to everybody else? Mm. No, you see, and that's the way we have to look at the flu shot. Uh, what I thought I'd have Doctor Schmidt, all right? He's a, uh, an ER physician, one of the big big uh, ER doctors over at San Joaquin. He sits and chairs the disaster relief uh, uh, for the county and for the, uh, uh, San Joaquin. Uh, I just wanted to bring him on because there's some things about what happens with flu and what you shouldn't be doing to do it. All right, Kevin, what do you what, talk? What do you, uh, first of all. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to Jazz and Dr. Mensage for having me on today. Um, I was actually, I have to say, Jazz, I was listening to you on the way in, and I wasn't expecting Jazz. <laughs> I was expecting a Taz. Boy, you were really fired up there. Uh, well, well any- I, yeah, I don't need to talk about uh, about the flu to get me down from talking about PC <laughs> yeah, okay. college campuses. <laughs> You know, unfortunately, I didn't bring all my Ativan and stuff with me. I don't like to treated you here. But uh, uh, anyway, so the, the thing that got us going on this is that in 2009, we had the swine flu scare in right. town. Mm-hmm. And basically what this was in retrospect was it was mass hysteria. It was created by the media. And in fact, at the time, if you got the actual H1N1 swine flu at that time, that you didn't have as bad a system as a typical flu. But the emergency rooms were flooded they had the cdc putting up tents in the in the parking lots this was just insane sure, well, we had a, no, a, I tent, remember. a tent at san Joaquin. i remember yeah, we, this. We, we had to take the i had to take the wife to the emergency room for something it was it had nothing to do with having the flu and she coughed once and and all of a sudden it was like the it was like the Red Sea parted. Everybody got out of our way. Yes, yes. I was going to say that's one way to get, I guess, seen quickly, right? <laughs> We're not recommended. So we wanted to talk about a little bit about trying to prevent people from coming to the emergency room. And the first way you can do that is please, please get the vaccination. Mm-hmm. As, as, as Jan had just said, 
that the biggest thing you can do is even for society is to get a vaccine so you're not spreading this around. For me personally, I got it in 1990 when I was a surgical resident, and then I've had the vaccine every year mm-hmm. since then. Well, I'll tell you, when I got it, I couldn't stand up. I felt like I was being beat up. Every year I've gotten it after that, I've never had any symptoms. How long did it last? Oh, it was, it was several days, but I mean, I, could, I literally couldn't See, stand up. See, I don't know, but because I've had colds before, and I've had things that were worse than colds, but they were all gone in a day or two. And the only time I was ever felt like I was knocked out, and I didn't go to the doctor. I just didn't have any insurance, didn't have any money, just didn't do it. Uh, I was working in a nightclub as a DJ and, you know, on an independent contractorship with the with the club. And I ended up being out of work for about five nights. And I was on my back the whole time. And I think it was pneumonia. But it was pretty bad. I don't know yeah. if it was the flu or not. But that was many, 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 many years ago. And if it's anything like that. I know I'd never want to go through that again. Yeah, and so why should you have to? If you just get vaccinated, we can try and prevent this. Now, of course, you can. it can get worse. It could have been an pneumonia. Uh, but let's try and get ahead of this thing so you mm-hmm. don't end up like that. Yeah. Well, you know, that that comes back to you know, what I said. This, you know, there, to a certain extent, there's a, a social responsibility to, to look at this and say, uh, yeah, I, I want to prevent some other old guy or whatever, whoever that person is. A kid, then, a little kid. It could be a little kid that's got, uh, got, got leukemia and has got a poor immune system or something else that you, by, you could be by coughing or touching some surface that they're going to touch, setting this thing, that person mm. to die. And that's where, where we don't think of it. We're always thinking, what, I don't get the flu, forget it, I don't need a flu shot. But that, ve- that vector, that, that area of flu is still running around. Why we have no polio today is because there's no polio virus going around. All right, 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 exactly. And that's essentially, how exactly. we want to look at the at the flu, and it's not a popular way to look at it. I I, I want to be frank with it, but uh, it's a way that if we're going to get control of it and not have thirty forty thousand people die every year, this is what's going to happen. And number two, the bigger issue to me is if we can get control of the flu. You know, he mentioned H one N one, and there are other serotypes that are going to come up that are going to be disastrous. I mean, if you think of World War I, what stopped World War I was that the Germans got the flu two weeks before the Allies did, all right? And literally it wiped out the German troops and they sued for peace. A lot of peace, a lot of people don't know that. But what happens, they had a mortality of something like 35% at that time uh, in the areas in the, in the trenches from the flu. If we get another flu virus, a real bad one, and we don't have this reserve of all a lot of population that has been uh, immunized, it can be disastrous. And that's where it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, Kevin, would you recommend they go to the ER if they get the flu? No, absolutely not. I'm actually glad that you brought that up because if you have the flu, you're going to give it to somebody. If mm-hmm. you don't have the mm-hmm. flu, you're going to get it. And the bottom line is there's really not much we can do for you anyways. There's simple things that you can do. Wash your hands. Don't cough on people. Um, take some ibuprofen or some Tylenol if you do get a fever and the body aches. Drink plenty of fluids. You know, try to avoid sick people. Wash your hands frequently. And then if you do get in the emergency room, like I say, as you run the chance of giving it or getting it, and there's really not much we can do for you anyways. Well, well you know, that's interesting. <clears throat> Most people who come to the ER is after 72 hours. What's important about that? It's significant because in order to have any benefit of all, you have to start the, the uh, medication within the first 48 hours. Yeah, and nobody, and nobody's sick enough nobody's, to get it. Yeah, exactly. So oh, by the time you got there, it's, it's not going to work. It's yeah. too late. Yeah. All right. People don't it's understand It's not that. like the scratchy throat and you take the uh, airborne or any of those other well, medications. Those things are not bad to do. No, no, but, yeah. but, but when you get the scratchy throat, that's two days before you're going to get the full bore cold, usually for me yeah, anyway. Right. Yeah. And I overdose on vitamin C or some of those yeah, other, other zinc and yeah. things like that. And uh, and usually it's very mild. And then I just, you know, yeah. tapered maybe just a half a percent less than I would be uh, normally. Yeah. And then I'm fine after yeah. two days. The other thing what we recommend, we do in the practice, we're very aggressive <clears throat> with D3 replacement. But essentially, if <clears throat> go to your doctor, get him to check your D3 level, and make your D3 level between 80 and 100. If your D3 level is above 80... Literally, your immune system is up here, and you will have minimal symptomatology. It's really? it's amazing. Really? Uh, two years, three years ago, uh, January to January, essentially, we checked all D three level. Well, we're, we that was before we were being aggressive with D three replacement, and uh, January a year later when we were, we had eleven percent more patients. Jazz. We had thirty nine percent fewer visits the next year mm-hmm. because of it, of with upper respiratory infections. 
it is amazing what can happen. There's amazing literature with this stuff. But you have to have D3 level. It's 80 or above. Vitamin D3, That's 80 or above. above. Your doctor and you can do ch- this through any blood yeah, test. Yeah, uh, you, your doctor will do it for you. Uh, but it takes aggressive uh, replacement to do that. But if you do that, amazing things happen. Uh, <clears throat> literally, uh, I went to a conference uh, <clears throat> this was about two years ago about uh, D3 replacement. And, you know, they tell you that it's good for skin cancers and all this kind of, and it's what's called apoptotic. It literally decreases the risk of skin cancer if it's a bit 80 or above. And I, <clears throat> this is, a, I kind of made a mistake uh, with this guy, but I had a guy about probably about six months, five and a half months, six months ago, came in, and he had a congenital defect, all right, that essentially he has a gene defect, and he gets skin cancers all over his body. Oh, dear. And he came to me with, on his legs, covered with preactinic uh, 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 keratosis. These are early squamous cell carcinomas. There, you, there's so, this guy has, is 51 or 52, and he's had over 100 biopsies. I mean, you can't cut them all off, all right? And uh, I can't, he came to see me, and I mean, all we do, the, and we bring them in every six months, and we essentially strip them naked and look and <laughs> take the worst ones off. That's literally oh, what happens. And I was hard. telling him, I said, listen, we need to do your vitamin D3 levels, all right? Because there's, a, uh, there's very good literature about D3 and uh, <clears throat> levels high above 80, and skin, uh, limiting the access to skin cancer. And he said, okay. And uh, <clears throat> he came back, his D3 levels were eight, which is just disastrous, oh low. And we replaced his D3. And uh, I made a mistake, Jez. My mistake was I should have taken a picture beforehand. Mm-hmm. His legs are just yeah. covered with thousands of his skin cancers. And taking a picture beforehand and after. And I did. And, all right? But anyhow, six weeks later, he comes into the office. He is ecstatic. In fact, he drops his shorts off his <laughs> pants almost to the floor. I walk in. It's almost inappropriate. I say, what's going on here? Eighty percent of his skin cancer lesions are gone. gone. He'd never seen anything like it. Amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. But there's a lot. Of it, keeping the immune system is very important to that. No, but I, you've got to get the get the flu shot because if you don't, you are have the potential to spread it to someone else, and you may sentence that someone else to death. And, and we'll be uh, we'll take a break right now. Come back, and he wants to talk about female sex hormones. This is a family show, Doc. I don't know if you know about this. It's a freaking family show here, Doc. You know what I'm saying? For the love of me. We'll be right back. More with, we got two Docs, by the way. Here's two. If you've got a question, by the way, uh, give us a call. 399-1560. 399-1560. Ask the Docs here on the Jazz McKay Show on KNZR. If you have more nice things to say about countries like Cuba and China than you do about your own country, you might be a brain-dead liberal. You're listening to Jazz McKay on KNZR. Welcome back. This is Jazzariah McKay on 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. We got two docs for the price of one. And today, I think you, uh, uh, Dr. Schmidt, are going to be sort of alongside um, myself as being uh, students here of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mensik because you're talking about female hormone thing. What is it now? Female testosterone, testosterone for females. Testosterone for females. And Dr. Schmidt and I ain't real too clear on what the hell that you're talking about. <laughs> We're both so, sitting here scratching our heads. <laughs> Go ahead. Hell, well, you know, a, lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't realize uh, that... Uh, uh, for females, we, uh, you have, females have three th- have three different uh, hormones that they uh, they have testosterone, they have progesterone, and estrogen. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, three types of estrogen. And what uh, what uh, menopause starts with? What they don't realize is menopause starts with in the forties, actually age thirty eight, with a, the first hormone to decrease is not estrogen. Everybody thinks it is. In mm. fact, the first hormone in, in the premenopause to decrease is testosterone. All right? Is that right? The second hormone is progesterone. The last one is estrogen. All right? Of the three estrogens. So what I thought is we'll go over a whole bunch of action, <clears throat> what testosterone does in women, how you can know that there's an issue and problem, and then take it from there. <clears throat> but Let's go over the things that uh, the, the risks for progester- for testosterone problems. You're over 38. Uh, you've had your ovaries removed. You will not make testosterone very minimal. Uh, <clears throat> premature menopause before age 38, all these women have major testosterone problems. All right? Or if your ovaries were ever exposed to radiation. Now, what does it do, literally, if you have low testosterone in a female? They lose their sex drive. 
All right, and that co- very common around age 38, 40, women lose their sex drive. And that can be replaced, or replace their sex drive, that's not the right word, but correct the sex drive. <laughs> I said that wrong. <laughs> By replacing testosterone, okay? Uh, <clears throat> women who can't get organ- orgasms, who've had orgasms in the past. More fatigue. Fatigue is a major part of, <clears throat> of uh, low testosterone, as is loss of being able to build muscles, all right, or their muscles get weaker. Insomnia is caused often by lack of testosterone or people who wake up and can't go back to sleep. Mm. <clears throat> testosterone does that in females, not so much men. Uh, <clears throat> people who don't feel, uh, when they wake up in the morning, women who feel tired, one of the causes is low testosterone. Migraine headaches, this is interesting. After age 38, migraine headaches that develop after age 38, a high correlation with testosterone deficiencies. You can correct that testosterone, headaches go away. And it's wow. Hmm. Uh, e- decreased exercise stamina, gaining weight, you know, belly fat, essentially. Uh, <clears throat> osteoporosis, major, major effect with the testosterone decreasing. In fact, you, I do not believe that you can correct osteoporosis correct, uh, totally without correcting testosterone levels in women. Hmm. Uh, it's not the only issue, but it's a major. Uh, <clears throat> people whose heights decrease because of uh, osteoporosis. Another thing a lot of people don't realize is if you have memory troubles. All right? There's a major correlation with memory. Uh, People who uh, have arthritis, we now know that, for instance, if uh, we've known this for quite a while with uh, RA or with uh, fibromyalgia, but also true with with, uh, rheumatoid, if if you have a testosterone deficiency, I correct that, there are some studies showing up to 20 to 30% of relief from just doing that. That's amazing. And a lot of the things that you're describing symptoms-wise could probably be attributed to to some something Other things, else, right? Yep, yep. A lot of another thing. So it could be this is something that could be missed by some doctors. It we don't think about it, Jazz. I mean, it, a lot of doctors are not being trained uh, uh, for biological hormones. Number two is it something that's not on our uh, often on our radar. We're thinking about everything else. A lot of, here's another thing that's amazing. There's a whole bunch of things that decrease testosterone that we don't think of. Now, doctors know this, but as patients, we don't think of it. Any antidepressant that has a serotonin effect not, uh, literally lowers your testosterone level. Most antihypertensives lower the free testosterone, not the, not the sex-binding globulin. Birth control pills all decrease testosterone levels. Hmm. So women who take birth control pills end up initially, they think they're, you know, they're going to have you know, sex without uh, worrying about pregnancy, but their sex drives after about 18 months go down the drain. All right? Uh, all statins, cholesterol-lowering meds, decrease testosterone levels. All right? Mm. We have a lot of trouble with uh, statins in older men who already have low testosterone. They get in their, and testosterone literally lowers cholesterol levels and has a beneficial effect on, uh, on uh, your lipid levels. Literally, it ends up being the, you know, this circular thing that we put there – their levels, uh, you know, their, let's say, uh, LDLs go up. We put them on a statin. And often, if you correct their testosterone, we do this every day, to correct their testosterone first, their LDL and cholesterols come down, and they don't need the statin. All right? And literally, the statin makes the testosterone levels get lower. It makes a, can make the problem worse with the weakness in that. Oral estrogens, <clears throat> steroids, all steroids, most steroids, uh, like a medrol dose pack that we use a lot, or uh, hydrocortisone, things like that, lower uh, the amount of testosterone uh, temporarily. Uh, all synthetic progestins, like that's Provera, things like that. And then there's a few things like uh, tamoxifen that literally bind. This is used for people with, with breast cancer that, that bind testosterone. But there's a lot of medicines that people don't realize is lowering the testosterone. Mm-hmm. And literally what happens is that the women get sick. If you don't have enough testosterone, Jazz, <clears throat> in fact, I'll, let me read over a list of things, that test, actions that testosterone does in women. It active, activates brain activity and memory. And I have had women that we've replaced testosterone in. It helps get rid of that what call, women call brain fog when they go through menopause. Testosterone can act as an anti-inflammatory, although it's not the major anti-inflammatory. Testosterone, there's evidence today, right now, we have studies that are showing that 
uh, lower uh, high, uh, lower testosterone levels are inc- uh, show an increased risk for dementia and Alzheimer's disease. That's amazing. Uh, does any of this stuff apply to men? Yes, same. Th- much of it does. Here, here's one: uh, insulin resistance, uh, pre uh, uh, pre diabetes, diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome. Yeah. That is improved with testosterone. It increases bone strength. We all know that. It increases muscle strength. Increases energy. Here's something very, very interesting. Uh, it, as we grow older, Jazz, every one of us uh, lowers our growth hormone. That's a natural part of aging. In fact, you, uh, there are phenomenal uh, uh, correlations between when your growth hormone gets so low and what's called telomere shortening. But essential uh, DNA, you know, a certain part of the DNA gets too, uh, gets too short. Everybody dies. Mm. And it's, almost, uh, it's like almost predictive, all right? Testosterone lo- increases the rate, of, or the, uh, or lowers the rate of the of uh, growth hormone decreasing, and that's major, major. It increases libido in women. All right, uh, if you replace in their forties a woman with testosterone, they no longer lose their libido, uh, and it increases skin thickness. I had a lady come, or a guy come in actually this morning who, uh, he's in his sixties. He didn't want to take testosterone. And his skin, in fact, he, said, he, put the, he went to his arm and he says, look, doc, he says, my skin's getting thin like an old man. And he says, why? And he says, well, look at mine. He says, well, yours is thick. How come? That's a major cause of testosterone. The, the, <laughs> the, the skin thinning out when, thinning when, out. when, when the yeah, testosterone is, right. uh, is in need of replacement. Yeah. And how is it replaced? Is it a pill? Uh, is it a cream? <laughs> Is it, a, se- is it a spray? Uh, there are several ways. Uh, you can take testosterone by pill. Nobody does it, okay? And there's several reasons, because it goes to the liver, what's called a first pack oh, pass right. effect, and screws things up, and actually is bad for I'll you. I'll tell you what, let's take a break and come back, and you can explain the different forms of uh, sure. testosterone replacement, uh, 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 and we'll do that with Dr. Messick and Dr. Schmitz here. And we're going to tell you how you can get, now you have a, a special clinic coming up, flu clinic over yeah, at, in uh, fact, at the hospital. Kevin, talk to there's free shots. Let them know about that. Yeah, yeah we'll do this that, is, when, we we, do that, we'll that when we come back. We'll tell that when we come back. Because there's, yeah, that's fantastic. Right here on the Jazz McKay Show, if you don't have insurance, well, guess what? You don't, uh, we got a way for you to get your flu shot. Welcome back. It's the Jazz McKay Radio Extravaganza. On 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. Dr. Schmidt, tell me, if you would, now you've got some flu uh, clinic, free flu shots. Is that what I'm understanding? Of? Yeah, we sure do. At the uh, 14th of November, starting at 7 AM, uh, we've actually got a drive through flu clinic. Well, we will be very happy to give you a flu vaccine. And uh, it starts at 7 AM until we run out of the vaccines. It doesn't cost you a dime. Now, what day is this again? That's on uh, November 14th, Four- starting at 7 AM. This is Friday, right? Is it Friday? The it is. Boy, yeah. what happened to the time? No kidding. Yeah. And then we've no got kidding. a, uh, I was going to say, well, yeah, so, I mean, please come on down. We uh, That's what we bought them for. We want to make Sam sure you're Joaquin, uh, uh, where, where at? Uh, in front of San Joaquin or on the side? Where, where? There's, there's going to be plenty of signs there to direct okay. everybody. Okay, all right. Yeah. So on the 14th, that's Friday. Yeah, this Friday. is a big thing, Jess. I mean, literally, thou- <laughs> Uh, I think there's 50,000 units or something, but there's a pile of vaccine. They've yeah. got lots of it. You know, this is a big thing, not a little deal. Yeah, this please, please. Come this early. Awesome. Come early. This is terrific. Yeah. Starts at 7 a.m. this Friday. Yep, and we keep going until we give it away. And then if you're interested, we've also got a lecture uh, on uh, December 9th starting at noon. And uh, we talk about the flu, and I think that uh, the TV stations are there. We usually have a follow-up uh, article in the uh, Bakersfield Californian about it, mm-hmm. and Dr. Todd Peterson will be uh, giving a lecture on that one. So we can tell you things about the effects, the uh, uh, getting a vaccination, who should be seen in the emergency room. Most of you should not. Uh, and just uh, generalized information for everybody. And it's free. You're welcome to come. And uh, if you'd like uh, more information on that, we usually get about 120, 150 people. So if you'd like some information on that, you can call and reserve a spot at 869-6560. That's 869-6560. And one more time with that phone number there. We, we have a religious thing here. We do it three times. Okay, 869-6560, and I've just been baptized. <laughs> Uh, Doc, real quick, uh, uh, testosterone replacement. How is this handled? Well, there's it's not a pill. You're uh, several th- several things, uh, and we, we've talked this on the on the show before about test, uh, essentially hormones. Uh, I'm a strong believer in bioidentical hormones. Uh, in when the Women's Health Initiative came out uh, in 1999, mm-hmm. essentially what happened is that, <clears throat> that uh, we studied uh, all the hormones 
uh, for women. And essentially, they, the studies were done on uh, synthetic hormones and, tes- and, uh, and premarin and synthetic progestins. And make a long story short, it increases the cause of cancer, strokes, heart disease, clots, you know, bad. And they were stopped overnight in 2001. And then uh, what happened is they repeated those studies with bioidentical hormones. So it's the same hormones your body makes. Now, there's a problem, two problems with it. And uh, lower, what happened is, lo and behold, it lower, these hormones, the bioidentical hormones, lower the risk of cancer, lower the risk of stroke, lower the risk of clots. Everything is good. They don't make you live any longer, but you live better, bottom line. Uh, so what happened, and that message has not come out. Everybody thinks, oh, there's all hormones are bad. The bioidentical hormones are actually good, but they can only be given several ways. And there's a problem with this. Because bottom line, the drug companies can't patent your own body hormones. So no drug company can make a medicine out of it. So they have to be compounded, all right, or mm-hmm. pelletized. And uh, that's the issue because uh, nobody can, you know, we can't have So a, there's no money in it for big pharma you to, to probably, get it. Probably, it's a, probably the bottom line, all right? So yeah. uh, two things have happened because of that. The word hasn't got out because much of doctor's education is by, done by big pharma. Uh, number two is uh, the, the, it, they have to be compounded. Now, they work. These, when I say compound, these are either creams. Uh, for women, we use a lot of creams. Or for women, let's say you came in 40 and were having these symptoms, I would probably put in a single a pellet of testosterone. And the pellets last for about uh, probably about four and a half to uh, six months. It's like a little big grain of rice that you put mm-hmm. under your skin. And they slowly absorb. Uh, that's the two ways that you can do testosterone easily. You can do what's called testosterone cyprinate, and you can give it IM. Uh, we don't use that for women. That's more for men, and it's not a. I, there are some downsides to it. It's uh, <clears throat> not as good for you, uh, but it literally uh, women with a testosterone pellet uh, <clears throat> under their skin. It can be like magic, just and overnight. It, yeah, overnight. Really? Wow. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> and it, it 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 works, Jess. It works. Quite amazing. Uh, get in touch with the doc, Dr. Mensink, at the practice for any and all information about this or any whatever might be bothering you. It's $69 a month, no co-pays, prepaid family medical with a little bit of a difference, a much more personalized yes, uh, uh, well, practice. Yes, well, a lot of difference. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of differences over there. Uh, 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 an examination room with a six-foot stand-up of John Wayne is uh, is kind of different. You got. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I told you, Jazz, but that that somebody that that room is it's very unique. But uh, that room, the cowboy some, room, yeah, the cowboy room. Some, one of our well, I don't know if it was somebody who was in that room took that picture, uh, several pictures of that room, the cowboy room, uh-huh. put it on Facebook, and it went viral across the country. We have no idea who did it. <laughs> That's no awesome. Idea. Cowboy room. That is just too awesome. It really is. It really is. Sixty nine dollars a month, you get unlimited access to see uh, Doctor Mensick or uh, who was the uh, lady that I saw the other day? Uh, uh, Doctor Murphy and Doctor Steinberg, Dr. and we Murphy. also have Doctor Cullen. Yeah, a yeah. whole staff of folks over there. Uh, believe me, folks, you'll have the peace of mind when uh, joining the practice, of knowing that your doctor's there for you and uh, and there for you for all of your needs, and he takes this stuff very seriously and very personally. So. Uh, give them a call. It's 871-3300 at the practice. 871-3300 at the practice. Call them now. 871-3300. Set up an appointment. Go in. They'll tell you everything you need to know. And sign up for the practice to see the doc the very same day. Helen, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. First of all, Friday is the 13th and Saturday is the 14th. Oh, goodness. Thanks for changing that, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Friday the 13th, no. No. No, 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 no. no. Chris, I need a day off Friday. I can't be here. (laughs) Uh, um, Oh, and the other thing is, okay, how often there's certain things, I mean, it depends on what's wrong with you what the protocol or what the deal is with how often you get certain testing. So what's the deal with how often you get tested for D3? I mean, uh, well, some, you know, if you don't have any big deal with lipids, you get it every five years. If you do have a no, big deal, you get it every six months, yeah. every year. What, what we no, do at the practice, what, Helen, what we do at the practice is, uh, uh, number one, every, well, not any, hopefully, hopefully every patient that comes in, uh, who is who has any medical issues? If you come in for for a school physical, you're not going to do this. But if you come in for uh, anybody over age 25, 26, 27 who ha- uh, comes in, we, part of our standard protocols, we check every patient for D3. We're very aggressive with that because it is amazing. Uh, 
about seven years ago, they uh, they checked D3 levels. Now, when I went to medical school, essentially they told me, listen, uh, <clears throat> we put D3 in milk, uh, 400 units in eight, uh, in eight, eight ounce glass of milk. Uh, it prevents rickets and uh, <laughs> rickets, and I've uh, you know, never seen a case of rickets kind of thing. Mm. And don't worry about it. You go, enough, uh, go out in the sun, gets enough sun and all that. Well, <clears throat> seven years ago, they repeated those studies, and lo and behold, seventy-six or forty-six uh, percent of the population in the United States is deficient in D three, and that was sort of the wake-up call. Why? And they did a bunch of studies with it. So, we're, it's very, very common uh, D three deficiency. And once you, so we did every, the first time you come in to see us, we'll check your D three level, just like we check your cholesterol and a bunch of other things. We'll check that, and literally, we find half the people have problems with D3. And that's the first step you want to do, Helen, when you come in to see or go to see your doctor. Number two, the second thing is that a lot of people, uh, the levels are, a <clears throat> normal D3 level is between 30 and 100. What people don't understand is if your levels are very low, in fact, if you have a level between 8 and 14, literally, yeah, mine was 25. That, that literally will make people depressed and you will not respond to your antidepressants or serotonin agents unless you correct it. Mm. Uh, number two, but if you have a level of 25, uh, 24, uh, 18 around there, your body will ache, your skin will be dry, your joints will hurt, you'll feel tired and fatigued. If you, uh, add, uh, if you correct to about between 50 and 70, those, that's at the level people feel good, all right? 30, 40, they don't just actually feel really optimal. But if you correct them to, to 50 to 70, they feel good. Now, if you go uh, correct them to 80 to 100, the top range of, of normal, amazing things happen with your immune system, with uh, your energy levels. Literally, the D3 will literally promote or increase the levels of testosterone in women and men, by the way. Amazing things happen. And so we like our patients up top. Now, for many of those patients, they have to take supplementation, all right? Your body needs between six and 8,000 units of D3 every day, all mm-hmm. right? Uh, and most people don't get it, all right? And we recommend between five and 10,000, depending on your, your levels now, to do. Uh, the other thing that you need to be aware, Helen, is if you have low D3 levels, and it's a research thing to test for this, but uh, most people, if your levels are uh, below 25, uh, when your D3 levels, essentially all these people have essential fatty acids uh, problems. It's about $500 to check for those kind of things. And so it's those are the good ones, the essential fatty acids? Yes, those are the good ones. So essentially what you okay. want to do is what we tell our patients, you take two fish oil capsules, I don't care what size, what brand, whatever. Krill is probably a little bit better, but it's more expensive. Two fish oil capsules every day if you have low D3 levels with your D3 replacement. Now a lot of doctors will go there and, well, your D3 levels are low, we'll give you 1,000 units a day. It doesn't cut it. It takes months. In fact, most many of them will what never get it. What did you have there. me on originally? Uh, 50,000? Well, we give you 50,000 units early initially, but right. after that. To boost it up. That, to boost, boost it up. Uh, and that gives people about between 80 and 120 level. And they do fantastic. They bring it up. But then after to keep that rate, you either need between five and 10,000 units yeah, per I'm day. Yeah, I'm doing about 10,000 myself. Yeah, and, well, and it keeps, that will keep the levels up about between 80 and 100. Yeah. And then, so once you do that, maybe about six months later, you may want to have your doctor check it again and see how you're doing. All right? All right. Okay, All right. Yeah, it's been a year and a half, so I'm going to have it done next time I do labs. You should. Take it from me, you should. it's not the kind of thing, I mean, there's like A1C where Medicare will only pay for it every so many months unless they put the right code. And so there's certain tests well, you have to Well, yeah, watch, but you've you got, know? you've got, uh, I mean, you get the five and ten, the 5,000 unit capsules twice a no, day. No, I mean the test, the lab test. Oh, the test. Your, oh, I see. Your, yeah, because there's like your A1C if you have diabetes. How much is, how much is that the test? Like oh, it's about $28. Every so often, but you know, unless... Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's the, the good news, Helen, thing. for practice patients. But in fact, this morning, just just before we came here, we, I had a meeting with one of the local labs in town. But we're right now negotiating with for our practice patients to get a lower prices for our labs, and we're going to include them hopefully with by December, uh, January first or February first. Hopefully, yeah, in, on level two, level there. two, we're going to have free labs for all our patients. Excellent, excellent, Helen. I appreciate the phone call. Got a roll, Doc. It's great seeing you, Doc's Terrific meeting you, sir. Uh, Sam Joaquin, uh, emergency patients are in the very best hands, I can tell. Thank you so much. Very so, uh, very You good know, I was going to say, I actually always wanted to meet a uh, 
meat eating, red blooded, flag waving, <laughs> gun toting America. America. That's, that's right. That's Thanks, right. Jazz. Right there. Glock 40 on my hip there. Jazz McKay on 1560 AM and 977 FM KNZR. Think of the practice like a doctor from 50 years ago. No long waits for appointments. 40% of our appointments are seen same day. No rushed appointments and access to phenomenal amount of discounts. We have the time to do good medicine. We're also focused on the emotional, the spiritual, dietary. All of those things feed in. We do more than most urgent cares do because we have the expertise, the skills, and the equipment to do that. We're able to do that top quality medicine, have that phenomenal access for less than a cup of coffee a day. I joined the practice for a number of reasons. One, I knew Jan Mensley for many years. He's a superb doctor and I have appreciated his expertise in other areas. It's very affordable. Medications, he's worked out deals with pharmacies. One medication I get for free, it would cost me $300. What I like best about the practice is the availability and accessibility. At times I'm able to get in in two or three hours. They deeply care about their patients here in an extraordinary way, which is unusual in today's modern medicine in most places. My husband and I joined the practice three years ago. Uh, we could not afford medical care at the time. Not long after we joined, my husband had a spider bite, and he got very ill within a day. I was terrified that we were going to have to put him in the hospital, which I knew we're looking at forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. We brought him in, and Dr. Mensing saved his life. We were able to come in here every day without any extra charges. I love Dr. Mensing. He's wonderful, and I will never, ever forget how Dr. Mensing was with us. My family and I have been members of the practice for the past two years. I joined the practice because I wanted to find a place where my family could be treated without taking a lot of time. But what we like about the practice is that uh, if our kids are sick or we're sick, we need medical attention, they'll take us usually the same day. They treat you very well. It's not very expensive, it's affordable. I like that the practice is always there for us. Nos unimos con The Practice para que nuestra familia tenga muy buenos eficaces doctores. Nos gusta mucho porque si uno de mis hijos está enfermo, nos meten de forma inmediata, por lo general el mismo día. Lo que más me gusta de Practice es que hablan mi idioma. Es un plan muy económico y que atienden a uno muy bien. Lo que más me gusta de The Practice es que siempre están ahí para mi familia. Cuando llegué a, a la oficina y vi al doctor Messi, yo llegué y me sentía débil, muy débil. Yo había visto muchos doctores y no me arreglaban el problema. Pero cuando llegué aquí al doctor Messi, él me hizo un chequeo, un examen completo y, y encontró el problema y, y me ayudó, me dio el, el tratamiento que necesitaba. Y ahora me siento con mucha energía y estoy muy contento aquí. Él es un excelente doctor. Estoy seguro que les dará ayuda tal como lo hizo conmigo.